Hey guys, this is a premium video that I am releasing for free. This is a project demonstration from the Drawing from Imagination lesson. The projects are mostly premium. That's what people get when they buy the premium course. So if you want access to all the projects and the critiques, that's over at proco.com slash drawing. But right now, I wanna give you a little taste of what the projects are like. So I'm gonna take you through a little character design project where I'll do some research, I'll do some sketches, get familiarized with the character, and then at the end, do a, a full page sketch still. I'm, never, I'm not really gonna develop the character completely. But, but the whole purpose of this project is actually to practice our line quality. This is in the line section of the course. And so the whole time, I'm gonna be trying to use loose, confident strokes, tapered strokes, and not use any kind of scared, timid, scratchy lines. That's the purpose of this exercise while also doing something fun. Okay, so if you like this video, remember the full course is at proco.com slash drawing, and let's begin. Okay, so as I just start exploring the images, I am trying to look for things that excite me, maybe specific shapes, specific body parts. I'm just trying to familiarize myself with this creature, this animal. Even if I heavily cartoonize it, simplify it down to like a ball. You can still make something look like a pig or a cow in a very basic shape if you keep some very key characteristics from it. So one thing I've seen that I really like is one, their, their facial expression, their mouth is just like Bleh. like this guy. <laughs> so like that's the sound they make. The other thing is I kind of like some of these legs. Like, look at that. They're so simple. It doesn't just look like a human arm with different proportions like some animals. This one just looks like sticks with little mittens on the bottom. <laughs> what I like about this arm is that it almost feels like it's getting a little thicker as it gets towards the hand. Just a little bit. It's still mostly like a little stick. And then this leg is coming up and trying to grab on, try not to fall over. I like this. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do a little sketch, a little stick. I liked how it was getting thicker at the bottom. So maybe exaggerate that a little bit, see if that works. And then, yeah, they do just kind of have little mittens, a little, little thumb over here. Okay, and then there's like a stick that he's sitting on. So let's get that in there. And then the other leg is like just grabbing on, kind of like that. Notice I'm not, necessarily trying to just like draw a good picture. If I was, if I was just trying to like replicate what I'm seeing, I would have started with the body shape, right? That like big to small, it's kind of a general good guideline that helps you get things accurate. But that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just trying things. I liked the shapes of the legs. So I'm just going right into that and just seeing how that looks. Does that translate well on paper? And it's like, yeah, I kind of like that. I like these legs. Let's put a body shape in there, though. Let's see, you got, you got the head, the body is kind of sitting on the stick, and then a very, very arched back, and then the tail kind of just curves. Oh, what is it doing there in the shadow? It doesn't really matter. Okay, so one thing I want to try to observe or study here is actually just the way it's like grabbing on. This one is like, leaning on the stick is like standing and this one's kind of holding it from the bottom. Okay, and as I mentioned, one of the things I like about them is like the mouth. It was just like meh. So let's get that all the way across here. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. The length matters. No, 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 that's mm -mm. And then the nose kind of projects forward beyond the bottom jaw. So you can see this stage is not really drawing from imagination. This is research, this is study. Cause you know, this project isn't completely drawing from imagination. This is, we're just starting to dabble in it. We're getting our feet wet. Big eyes, man. Okay, that's one thing I didn't notice until now. Just like, what is that? Is there even an eyeball? This seems like he's got like seven eyelids. Okay, well, I might need to do a Google search, figure out what's going on there. But let's just see if I just draw kind of like what I'm seeing. Gets me anywhere. 
It's like almost like a camera lens where you got like these overlapping different angled arcs. I guess it kind of works. And he's got a bunch of spikes across the back, like, a, you know, the teeth on a blade. But, you know, I, I'm not going to draw that. I'm trying to cartoonize this, so I, I know I'm definitely not going to do that in my final version. So, in my exploration, I'm not going to even get into that kind of detail. It's a characteristic that I think might be important to capture in some way. But he's got the spiky back and they get bigger towards this middle area and then smaller again as they go back towards the tail. And then just maybe a little bit of like what kind of pattern do I want? I like the round things on, on this cheek. It's an opportunity to add some detail around the head as well, bring the attention to this area. But he's got them on the body as well. Maybe just a few. I don't know. Okay, some spots basically. Okay, next, on to the next study. Okay, what else do I want to see? Okay, here, this is a very dynamic angle. Okay, so let's play around with these shapes, see what's going on, familiarize our brain. All right, so the head here is more like a triangle this way. And then he's got that spiky thing at the top. So I'm learning that it's definitely a triangle up here, but it's a little wobbly and it's rounded. This one made it feel like it's very sharp, but this guy looks like it's rounded. So if I want to play around with that later, that's a note. But for now, I actually kind of like the sharp. So I'm gonna include that in, in the sketch, kind of a center line in here. And then this, this is his mouth. He's kind of smiling in this one. I, I want to see if I could make him feel more like that bleh. And this guy definitely also has a, a bigger bottom jaw area. He even almost kind of has an underbite. So totally different shapes than this one. So actually, I'm, I'm going to give this one a bigger underbite. Kind of like the asymmetry that accidentally happened here. It looks like he's got an underbite and also off-center jaw. Okay, so the giant eyes are just such a key feature here. And wow. Okay, so we can see this one a little bit better. It looks like, yeah, most of it is just a bunch of eyelids and then a very tiny hole where our pupil is. So they don't have the white of the eye, like the eyeball. They just have an opening in the eyelids that is the pupil. That's crazy. Oh my God. We could play with that actually later. Like these extra droopy eyelids will go with that expression of meh. And then on this side, it looks like, okay, that, that there's a ball eyeball there too. Almost feels like a brow ridge over here. And then the body shape, very, very foreshortened. That's a concept that we will get into later. But essentially, as something that is long starts to point at you, it gets shorter and shorter until all you see is the point. Same thing with the body. You know, on a side view, you're seeing the entire length. But as we rotate that chameleon towards us, we're seeing much less of that length that's being shortened because it's going off into the distance. And this gives us a really nice view into the structure of all these spikes. They're really tall and then the body is kind of under it and it's got, it's pretty much just a round belly. It's like, like a beanie bag. This arm is not as simple as the other ones. This one I'm like seeing little muscles or maybe that's just the skin but very similar pose you just got like these cylindrical forms going up elbow down and then it grabs on but there you go and then the big stick that it's sitting on is right there oh and wow interesting this guy's got spikes all along the bottom well that makes him look much tougher that's kind of cool okay I like it. I like it. And you might notice sometimes I'm doing these cross contours. I mentioned in the intro to line episode, cross contours. They're a type of line that indicate the form. You imagine a rubber band around something like a rubber band around this stick would just be kind of a circle, right? And so I'm drawing that rubber band around it. Same way here, drawing the rubber band around the body. And it just a very quick way in a sketch to show some volume. When I do this in a sketch, I'm not trying to be perfect with my perspective. I'm just trying to show an impression of volume and really any kind of ellipse in the right direction is going to do that. 
If you're seeing the top of it, then you put that arc along the top. If I were looking at it the other way, where this branch is going this way, where I'm seeing this part closer and this is going away from us, then we're seeing the bottom and so we're gonna put the arc along the bottom. Okay, so that's another sketch. I'm gonna scroll through the pictures one more time, see if there's anything else, and then I'm gonna move on to just my, my own explorations of shapes, more from imagination. Yeah, something I'm not completely clear on right now is the tail. So I'm seeing sometimes we have a tail like this where it's like perfect spiral, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's like the stereotypical tail that you'd see in a drawing of a chameleon. There's another one. But it looks like this guy is probably using his tail to balance. Whereas if they're sitting still, they'll probably just let it hang down and they'll curl up. Like this guy, he's not balancing. He's, <laughs> he's sleeping out. That is so cute. That is exciting. Okay, I'm going to draw this one. I love that he's sleeping. Okay, so first of all, he doesn't look as skinny as these other guys. Like even his legs, I feel like they've got a lot more mass on them. I mean, he's, he feels soft. And all of that weight, I could just feel it as it's like drooping down onto the stick. That's kind of cool. Now, I don't know if my final sketch is going to be of one of these sleeping, but this is exciting to me right now and I'm so I'm just gonna explore that. I do like that it's the stick is pointing down this way and then okay a big shape there's the head. Now everything feels like it's compressing against something else. Feels like he's not fitting. So you're just gonna have a lot of little overlaps. It's almost looking like a pig or something over here which is not bad like some of those same characteristics I might want to inject into this drooping shape here and then even the elbow I'm just gonna round it out a little bit and then that hand is super relaxed and even this little hand it's a detail but it's just such a fun one where you can see his hand is under his belly and his thumb is holding on to the branch but then these fingers have let go and they're just dangling <laughs> that's fun okay now the whole point of this was the tail it almost reminds me of like the golden mean. You got this arc and then it keeps just twisting into itself. And I think one important characteristic to capture with the tail is that it just progressively gets thinner and thinner. All right, now let's see. What what about this face do I like? Okay, so he, he's got more of a C curve like that. He almost has like little clown lips. Let me try it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. It's not the same meh feeling that just this gives me, but it's cool. Yeah, I don't really see all the eyelids. Probably just one down there. Making it look like it's closed. And all the little little spikes. Cool, I think I'm good. I, I I understand this guy. If I wanted to simplify him down to a cartoon character, I feel like I could do it. Right away, I wanted to start making it a little more cute. I just, that's, that's kind of the, the goal of this one for me. Don't necessarily have to do that in your project. And so what it usually means to me to make something more cute and cartoony is to make the, the head bigger, the body smaller, the limbs usually shorter. So let's just start trying that. It would help to see my previous drawings to base them off of, but it's okay. I'm gonna attempt to just go from what I've captured from those sketches. Okay, so I know that we have this kind of golden mean shape, right? Small body, I'm gonna give him a big head. And I definitely like the spike at the top. Ooh, I like this little thing that happened. I'm gonna go with it. And then really big eyes. From this angle, you're gonna see a little bit of the other one when it's that big. And then I remember the brow ridge that I liked. I'm gonna explore that shape. Let's go with some droopy, droopiness. That feels cool. Maybe that's not simple enough though. But whatever, it's okay. Maybe in another sketch I'll try something else, but I might also just humanize it a little bit and not do only a bunch of lids. It's very common to just add human elements to animals. 
uh, to make them more relatable to us. Okay, there's his body. So it's going to be hard to fit those legs in here because it's so small, but I can make them shorter, a little more like, a little more stubby. Something like that. There's a stick. And then he's grabbing on. I remember that. But then, what's his leg doing? Grabbing on, and then his leg was like, yeah, it's like that. I created this little gap in here, and it almost feels like his other hand should be visible coming in and grabbing on. A little mitten there. Okay, so that's cool. I kind of like this. Let's do another one. I feel like I stayed really safe with this one. I didn't really explore too much variety. I just made it cute proportions, which is totally fine, right? You can progressively get more and more risky with your exploration. One thing I, I'm noticing on this one though is he looks kind of mad though. He's just like, yeah, he looks mad and it's probably these two shapes and his brow and maybe not straight enough. Oh, actually, yeah, that, that helps. Adding a little bit of that clown lip <laughs> on this guy. I wonder if the spikes help. Yeah, spikes are cool. Note to self, this shape in the brow, probably not what I'm looking for. I kind of want a meh feeling, not a err feeling. One thing that you could do to start experimenting a little more is starting with a different shape. This one I started with pretty much what I saw was like that golden ratio. Now I'm going to start with just something else that is different from this. Maybe like the opposite way, like this way. Let's see if, what, can I do something with this? Is it still going to look like chameleon? I could definitely put a, a bigger head on it when it's this way. Will it still have that same feeling? Let's just try it. I might fail. That's totally fine. You have to uh, approach this with the mentality that it's totally fine to try something and it not working out and then you just try something else. There's a shape I'm going for. There's like a head, there's a body, and then, I mean, I do need a tail though. And I, I will stick to this, this tail. Okay, so I want to make sure I have at least some indication of that pointy back part. Ooh, and I'm gonna have this one ha be like the nose all the way at the bottom. See how, how much I can exaggerate that meh mouth. And let's try a more, lo a longer eyeball on this one. And let's just try two eyelids, maybe one at the bottom. Actually, maybe another like more droopy one. Exploring, going a little bit away from a safe shape. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exaggerating that idea of like this big ball and then you got this tiny black dot right in the middle with all these eyelids. This actually just feels like a bag under his eye, which I kind of like, adds to that droopiness. I feel like if I don't add some kind of arc in here, he's not going to feel like a chameleon. I mean, looking at some of these other ones, like not all of them have a really crazy tall arch. Some of them are a little more flat. And then you do have this one that kind of actually looks like he could arch his back backwards. This one's a little bit longer and skinnier though. So if I'm going for that kind of shape, I would probably have longer legs. Long skinny legs and actually this guy I'm drawing is he looks like he's kind of walking so he might use that balancing tail instead of a curved tail. This guy's an athlete. Okay, and then along his back, let's try something different. Let's do some really spiky spikes, a little more variety in the spikes. That's pretty cool. Now, I didn't know if it would work, but it works. I like the square shape of this head because it's a it's kind of unique it's very simple in a very simple way it captures a lot of what i like about the chameleons i saw it has a little bit of this triangle in the back it has a very flat bottom which is great for that mouth shape and the emotion i'm going for and then it's just got this really large space in the middle for this big eye and some of the bag so i like that shape i don't like the athletic pose the kind of energetic pose because it doesn't match the laziness of the facial expression. So, I definitely want to go back towards 
the hunched back um, and maybe even borrow some of the sleeping pose how he's actually resting his head on the branch and, and maybe even some of the really compressed forms. And I also like this idea of he was grabbing on and then his hand got relaxed. And so I was thinking I could maybe do one where his arm is kind of dangling down the back arm because I haven't really figured out what to do with that back arm. So I'm just doing a very, very small sketch just to show you guys what I'm, I got in my head right now. So, he's got a big head, hunched back, and then his back arm is dangling and it's loose like that. And then maybe even his tail, instead of being crunched up, maybe that is loose as well. I haven't tried that, but like it's loose and then just curls a little bit at the end like that. So, just a very quick little thumbnail sketch, or a little idea dump in here. Just a doodle, I guess. So, now let's actually try that out see if there's anything else I might be missing. Got to make sure I leave space for the dangling hand or dangling arm. I think instead of looking at us, which is kind of active, I think maybe what if his eyes are just kind of looking down. Oh, and I also really like the spikes. I just don't like the body shape in here. So maybe see if I could add more of the real, just the vertical spikes on this body shape. One thing I like about this is just there's two big ones and then a bunch of little ones. Maybe this just has too many of the big ones. There you go. Yeah, the variety is what makes that interesting. Okay, big head, small body, big spikes, and then let's try to get some laziness in the way that this, the legs all flow. What was he doing? So this was kind of compressed, his wrist up against his body. I kind of like that. So the wrist over here, instead of grabbing onto the pole, which is kind of active, he's just kind of resting, not really grabbing anything. Maybe, maybe the back leg, we can make it actually holding on. Okay. Yeah, this definitely captures the energy, especially this sweeping arm and the, the jaw resting up against the branch. So I tried this kind of relaxed tail, but I feel like it's not true to what they actually do when they're resting. Their resting tail pose is actually curled. I'll probably go back to that. And also, this kind of competes with two dangling things. If I curl it, then the arm goes lower than the tail, and so the dangling arm actually becomes more expressive. Okay, so I'm gonna now just do my final sketch. I'm gonna do a full page sketch on here. I do wanna see this though. So I'm going to take a picture. All right, so a branch going upward a little bit. You know, I'm a lot more confident with the shapes I wanna put down because I just did all these studies and I know exactly what my character looks like. Now I'm just doing a bigger sketch of the same thing. And so, by doing little studies where I was allowing myself to be more messy, now I can do a drawing where I'm still being sketchy with it. These are not like final clean lines, but I can have more confident lines. And by the way, even in this stage, you could still play around with some stuff because now you're kind of changing the scale. Things are bigger and you might come across things where now with more scale, you can explore the shapes a little better. Like the fingers at a small scale, you can't really do much. But now when they're three times bigger, you might be thinking, oh, well, what's this actual shape of this finger? Maybe, N not necessarily, but just saying scale sometimes does create new issues for you. It reveals things that you didn't know you didn't, haven't solved yet. Hmm, that's a little too small. Considering this hand is so big, the scale is not working. Maybe I could make this leg bigger and this obviously and then bringing back those spots. Kind of liked them in my first few sketches. Just a little bit of a texture detail. It adds complexity to it without really being that complex. Okay, I think this is almost done. Let me just go back through my sketches real quick and see if there's anything that 
I kind of just forgot about these bottom spikes, but I have his jaw resting on the branch, so this won't work. I'm pretty happy with this. If I were to take this into digital and try to clean it up, I think one thing that I would fix the proportions of is just this arm. I think it's just a little too big, but like I would probably bring it in a little bit, kind of just looking at where this body ends and where that shoulder would be. I would bring it in and put it like right in here. Actually, let me just fix that. So the hand needs to be a little bit smaller to match this. The arm needs to be shorter. Shoulder needs to be brought in. There you go. That's actually much better. <laughs> okay, now that works. Okay, well that was really fun. I hope you guys learned something about sketching and line quality. And if you want to get the critiques for this project and get the projects for the rest of the course, head over to perka.com slash drawing. We're gonna continue improving our line quality, then move on to shapes, get your shape design working, move over to perspective and start learning about 3D forms. And so you could intuitively get things in perspective in your drawings and then learn about values and edges so that you can start shading your drawings. And the whole course is a balance of drawing from observation and drawing from imagination so that we can be well-rounded artists from the very beginning. Cool, thank you guys. That's over at proka.com slash drawing. I'll see you in the next one.